Welcome back to Discovering Geometry with Mrs. Berry. This is Lesson 20. Today we have more construction problems, but this time we're going to look at points of concurrency. That's going to include the incenter, the circumcenter, and the orthocenter. First, we need to define what is concurrent. Concurrent is when we have three or more lines that have a point in common. So let's take a look at this picture. On the left side, we see three lines and they intersect each other, but not all three at the same time. So they are not concurrent. On the right side, we have three lines that all intersect at one point. And that is the point of concurrency where they intersect right here. The point of intersection is called the point of concurrency, the point of the intersection of the three lines that we have. So our first investigation is going to look at special lines in a triangle that will have points of concurrency. So we're going to investigate each set of lines on an acute triangle and an obtuse triangle. And if you want, you could even do a right triangle just to see if they're all the same. If you're using a compass and straight edge instead of patty paper, you might draw the two triangles on one sheet of paper, top and bottom. Otherwise, you're going to want a different piece of patty paper for each triangle. Choose a color pen or pencil to construct the three angle bisectors for each triangle. Are they concurrent? Do all three angle bisectors meet at one point? Then choose a second color to construct the perpendicular bisectors for each side of the triangle. Are they concurrent? Do they all meet at one point? Lastly, choose a third color to construct the lines containing the altitudes of your triangle. Are they concurrent? Are the concurrencies the same for the acute and the obtuse triangle? And if you draw a right one, are they even the same for the right triangle? So let's see what this looks like. Here I have my acute triangle, and I also have an obtuse triangle that I'll be drawing. And remember, when we're trying to find the angle bisectors, we are going to fold that patty paper. We're going to line up the rays of the angle, and we're going to make sure the fold is right on the vertex of the triangle. So that's a little hard to find sometimes, but you run it right on the vertex and then line up the two rays of the angle. I've chosen blue for all my angle, angle bisectors. And it's okay if you want to draw that angle bisector past the triangle. Um, you'll find that on some triangles, you'll need it to go past the triangle and sometimes you won't. So on this acute triangle, it works out very nicely. You can see that the two angle bisectors do intersect at a point in the middle. Now we're going to see if the third one does. So this investigation takes a little bit longer than the others as we're going to do three different things on this triangle and then again on an obtuse triangle. So indeed, my three angle bisectors have a point of concurrency. They all intersect inside that triangle. Now we're going to construct the perpendicular bisectors. So. On each side, we're going to match the vertices, and we're going to line up that side, and that will be our perpendicular bisector. So on that bottom side, I'm going to match up the vertices. and keep the line on top of itself. So I have two perpendicular bisectors drawn on my last side, line up the vertices. You can have lots of folds in your paper, so it's advisable to draw the lines after each one 
so that you're not confused on where that crease is and what it's going for. And my perpendicular bisectors have a point of concurrency inside of this acute triangle. Last, I'm going to draw the altitudes of my triangle. So remember that the altitude is perpendicular to a side up to the vertex. So that's where we're drawing a line perpendicular one side that intersects the vertex across from it. So you're going to make that fold on the opposite vertex, and then you're going to line up the sides across from it, lay them on top of each other. So there's my first altitude, perpendicular to that line on the right, going to the opposite vertex. So again, my, my fold is at my vertex, and then I'm lining up and putting on top of each other the lines across from it. Here's my second altitude. My last one, I'm going to go up to that top point. I'm going to line up that bottom side on top of itself so that I'm perpendicular to that side. Now, on some of your triangles, especially obtuse triangles, you are not maybe going to touch the side. It might have to be outside of the triangle. So just be aware that it's a line containing the altitude. You may have to draw some dashed lines to draw the side of the triangle outside of the triangle um, to get it to be perpendicular with that line up to the vertex. So then these special points of concurrency, the three angle bisectors, are going to intersect, and we call that point the end center, I-N-C-E-N-T-E-R. The point of concurrency for the perpendicular bisectors, the second one I drew in red, is the circumcenter. And then the point of concurrency for the three altitudes is called the orthocenter. So those are three more important vocabulary terms that we should learn the end center where the three angle bisectors intersect, the circumcenter where the perpendicular bisectors have a point of concurrency, and the orthocenter where the altitudes have a point of concurrency. You can see in my obtuse triangle that the end center is on the inside, but the circumcenter is on the outside, and my orthocenter is way on the outside. It didn't even fit on my piece of paper, but those altitudes would have intersected above my paper. So now we have some conjectures to add after our investigation. The angle bisector concurrency conjecture is that the three angle bisectors of a triangle form a point of concurrency. And that point will be called the end center. The perpendicular bisector concurrency conjecture is that the three perpendicular bisectors of a triangle also form a point of concurrency, and that will be called the circumcenter. And the altitude concurrency conjecture is that the three altitudes, or the lines containing the altitudes, of a triangle form a point of concurrency and that point will be called the orthocenter. And what do these special relationships mean to us? The points of concurrency form special relationships within the triangle. The end center the point of concurrency for the three angle bisectors, the circumcenter, 
the point of concurrency for the three perpendicular bisectors, and the orthocenter, the point of concurrency for the three altitudes or the lines that contain the altitudes. And so in our next investigation, we're going to see what relationships do they form? What's going to be unique? So we're going to use our triangles that we've already drawn. We're going to measure and compare the distances from the circumcenter to each of the vertices. Then we're going to measure and compare the distances from the incenter to each of the three sides. And we're also going to look at, you know, what about the circumcenter to the sides? Does that have a relationship? So you can compare all the distances from the special places, our circumcenter, our incenter, and even if you want to look at the orthocenter, um, compare the distances, see where you can find similarities. So here is my um, acute triangle, and I'm going to look at the circumcenter, and I'm going to go to the vertices, and I see that the circumcenter to the vertices is all the same. Now I'm going to look at the circumcenter to the sides. That didn't work out. How about the incenter to the sides? That one worked out. What about the incenter to the vertices? And then lastly, check the orthocenter. How about it to the vertices or to the sides? Did you find any relationships there? So hopefully you have seen the circumcenter of a triangle is equidistant from the three vertices. So the circumcenter is going to be where the three vertices have an equidistant. The incenter is going to be equidistant from the sides. So if you want a place that's in the middle of all the sides, you want to find the incenter. There are important and useful properties of the circumcenter and incenter that will help you explore um, relationships in the triangle, and you're going to investigate them more in your homework. A circle is circumscribed about a polygon if and only if it passes through each vertex of the polygon. So let's look at this. The circumcenter is right here, and the circle is circumscribed around this triangle. So the circle passes through each of the vertices of the triangle. The circle is circumscribed. It's around the triangle, and the triangle is inscribed. It's inside of the circle. Now, a circle can be inscribed in a polygon if and only if it touches each side of the polygon at exactly one point. So here, it has, there's a triangle that is circumscribed. The triangle is circumscribed. It's on the outside. The circle is inscribed, and when the circle is inscribed, that means that it touches each side of the triangle. So there's three points of intersection between the circle and the triangle because there's three sides of the triangle. That circle is only going to touch the triangle at one point on each side. If the circle was inscribed inside of a square, then it would touch at four places because the square has four sides. So the polygon in this these pictures are circumscribed and the circles are inscribed. And you will find that the center of the circle is the incenter on these because it's inscribed. On the circumscribed circle, the center of the circle will be the circumcenter. I hope you get to enjoy all these relationships within a triangle and these circles um, during your homework. I'll see you next time.